click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Welcome back to QuickBooks 2021. My name is Cindy. We're walking through module four right now where we're talking about customers and jobs. Now that you know how to create invoices, I wanted to go over how to receive customer payments in QuickBooks. You wanna make sure that each payment you receive, even if it's with cash, you enter it in QuickBooks so that you're telling QuickBooks that the invoice has been paid. Let's flip over to QuickBooks and I'll show you how to set up some customer payments. You'll notice the next thing on the flowchart after you create your invoice is to receive payments. And this is where you go when a customer pays you for an invoice you've sent them. It does not matter how the customer paid you, you want to go ahead and put the payment in this way so that you can tell QuickBooks that the invoice is paid. The first thing QuickBooks wants to know is who did you receive the payment from? I'm going to say it's from Tom Allen's Sunroom. And you'll notice what happens now is it will actually list all of the open invoices for Tom Allen Sunroom down below. It also tells you the customer's balance right over here. The next thing we're going to do is put in the amount that the customer paid. I'm going to say they paid the full amount this time, but even if they only paid $100, that's what you put in here. The next thing QuickBooks wants to know is what is the date of the payment? Let's go ahead and say that this one was on the 14th of January. And then you see a field that says reference number. Now based on which one of these buttons you've clicked on, this might change. For example, if they paid with cash, you still see that it says reference number, but if they pay with a check, it says check number here. If they pay you with a debit or credit card, this is going to appear. Now, if you've got your own merchant services account, you don't need to do anything here. You just cancel out of this. But if you're using the Intuit merchant services account, then you can plug in the card number and the expiration date and all the information. And then when you're done, it'll run their card through. You can also see there's an option for e-check. And then there's some options over here. You've got PayPal, MasterCard, and Barter. And if you want to add a new payment method, maybe Zelle, for example, just click on Add New Payment Method and type it in. You can also choose the payment type that this happens to represent. And then you just click OK. And now what you'll find is that Zelle will be in your list and you won't have to add it the next time. Don't forget, even if they paid you with cash, you'll want to go ahead and do this. Now, when you're looking down here at the list of invoices that are open, you're going to see that this list shows you the invoice number, the original amount of the invoice, the amount that's due, and then here's the payment that we entered. Now, all we did was check this off, and it automatically applied the full payment. If your customer is paying a portion of this invoice, make sure over here that you type in whatever amount they are paying. And you want to be careful because if you have multiple invoices in here, the customer may have specified for you to apply half to one invoice and half to another. They might not be paying the first one on the list, but maybe they're paying others below. Just make sure you have the correct one checked off and you have the correct amount next to each invoice that they're paying towards that invoice. Now let's go to the top and look under our main tab. You're familiar with how to find option works. If you wanted to look through the customer payments for a specific customer, you could use the arrows that go left or right, or use your find option, and you can type in any of the criteria here that you'd like. The next thing you see is your new option. This is where you go to actually save the current payment and create a new one. And then here's how you would delete this payment. You do have the ability to print this payment out if you'd like, or if you want to email this payment, you could. It basically allows you to email any payment activity. And then you can also attach a file. If you have any file that's related to this customer payment, you can attach it here. Now you have an option that says look up customer invoice. You can come down here and double click on an invoice to open it up. If you do make a change to this and save and close at the bottom, it will be reflected back in the payment window as soon as you do this. But up here, if I look up a customer in an invoice, this is going to actually allow me to search by any of these fields that you see right here. And you can put the information over to the right and then it will search and find any 
invoices that have that information in there. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. You can unapply a payment, and that's the same thing as just unchecking it over here. If you offer your customer a discount for paying early, then you can come here and apply that discount amount. There is an option to record a bounce check, but since this is one we're just entering for the first time, that's why this is not available. If you're signed up with the Intuit Merchant Services, then you can choose to process this payment right here. And you can also add credit card processing if you haven't purchased it yet from Intuit. Here under the Formatting tab, you're going to see that you can select a template for your email. There's only one available right now. If you wanted to actually manage those templates, go in and add one, customize one, you're going to be able to do that right here. And you can also customize the data layout right here. Under Reports, you're going to see several reports related to customer payments. If you wanted to run a transaction history, you could do that. That's actually going to show you the invoice and then this payment. Or if you had an estimate, it would show the estimate, then the invoice, then the payment. It will give you the whole history. If you want to see open invoices, you can do that. You can look at your customer balance detail, maybe sales by item or an item price list as well. The last tab that says Payments allows you to add Intuit credit card processing if you would like. Most everything you're going to use is under the main tab. Once you've decided that everything here looks okay, then you'll want to save and close. Now before we do that, I want to ask you a question. Where does this payment go? Let me show you something real quick. I'm going to go back to the home screen for a moment and back to the chart of accounts. There's an account in your chart of account called undeposited funds. This is money that you've received but you have not yet taken to the bank as far as QuickBooks is concerned. You can see currently there's $2,440. This is where this money is going to go once you save and close at the bottom. Let me go ahead and click on that. And now if you'll notice, this has gone up and it's $3,364.93. Now the invoice is paid, but the money is not deposited yet. I want to just show you real quick if you would like to have an option on the Receive Payment window to tell QuickBooks where to put the money, then you can turn that on in the Preferences. If I go up to Edit and down to Preferences, you want to go to the option that says Payments on the left, click on Company Preferences, and then uncheck this one right here. This one currently says use undeposited funds as default deposit to account. That's why your money would go into undeposited funds. If you uncheck that, then we're going to have a choice of where we want to put the money. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to close all the windows to change this preference. Now I'm going to go back and open up that payment. I'll hit the Home option. I'm going to Customers. And this was Tom Allen's sunroom. Here's the payment right here. If you notice now, you actually have a choice of where you'd like to put the money. If you decide that this is the only thing in your deposit and you want to put it in the checking account, you can click here and skip the next step of making the deposit. However, what if you have two payments that you received? Let's say they're for two different customers and you're going to put them in a single deposit then you want to make sure for each payment when you receive it, choose Undeposited Funds. That way, when we go to the next step of making the deposit, we can pull both of those checks into one deposit. I'm going to go ahead and save and close at the bottom. And let's say that there's another check we receive. I'm going to go back to Home, and I want to go back to Receive Payments. And this time, we're going to choose Christie's Kitchen. Let's say that Christie paid us $1,000. And she paid it on the same date. Let's just say it's the 14th of January. And she wrote us a check. And I'll go ahead and plug in her check number. I'm going to leave that one in undeposited funds as well and save and close. And that's how you're going to use the Receive Payment window in QuickBooks. Now that you know how to create invoices, receive the payments towards those invoices, the next thing you'll want to do is learn how to make deposits. Go ahead and flip over to video number 10 and I'll show you how to make deposits. 
Hey, welcome back to QuickBooks 2021. This is Cindy. We're working in Module 4 and we're talking about working with customers and jobs. We've learned how to create an estimate, turn that estimate into an invoice, receive a payment, and now we need to talk about how do we take that money and put it in the bank. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and I'll show you how to make deposits in QuickBooks. After you've received your payments, you'll want to go ahead and take that money that's in undeposited funds and record the deposit. The only exception would be if you were on the receive payment window and you actually told QuickBooks that you wanted to put the money in your checking account, then you don't have to take the step we're talking about now. It's already in the checking account. But make sure if it's an undeposited fund, you follow the flow chart all the way to the end. Now this little four tells you there are four payments that you received that you put in undeposited funds. Before we record this deposit, I want to just make sure that you know not to do this. A lot of times people will receive the payment and then they will go over to this check register and they will type in their deposit. You don't want to do that because the money will never leave the undeposited funds account. You want to take it out of undeposited funds and put it into the checking account. So follow the flowchart all the way to the end. I'm going to click on record deposits. And these are all the monies that are sitting in undeposited funds. You're going to check off whichever ones are going to be in this deposit. You've got to make sure your deposit matches an actual deposit at the bank or to make it really hard to balance your checkbook at the end of the month. But let's just say that all four of these were in the same deposit. Once you check them off, you'll notice that it tells you at the bottom the subtotal of your payments. All you have to do is click OK and it will bring all of those payments into this deposit window. The first thing you want to look at here is are you putting the money in the correct account? It's very easy to accidentally pick your savings. So make sure that you have it in the correct bank account and then make sure you have the correct date on your deposit. You don't want to change these accounts here because that's where the money came from. A very common thing that I see is people want to click here. This is your chart of accounts and they want to go ahead and choose an income account from this list. It's already income. You don't want to pick it again because then you'll be doubling your income. You'll notice there's a place for a memo if you wanted to put something there a place for check number or something in that field. You can see it's got the payment method and the class and then the amount over here on the right. If you wanted to add something to this, you could. Let's say that you as the business owner add $1,000. All you would do is go ahead and pick the correct account over here, which would be an equity account. If you remember, we talked about shareholder distributions and capital stock. We actually call them owner draw and owner contribution. This would be an owner contribution because the owner is putting money into the business. In this exercise, they just called it capital stock. And then I'll come over here and put $1,000. So you can add as many items as you want to this list. Another example might be, what if you had a rebate? Maybe you purchased a printer at your office supply store and they sent you a rebate check. If that was the case, then the account you want to pick here would be the account you used when you purchased that printer to begin with. If it went to an expense account, maybe it went to office supplies, then make sure you put the rebate back to the same account so that it will zero it. If you were going to keep some cash from this deposit, you could put in some information about that. Now, as a small business owner, if you don't have a business account, then you can do that. But if you have a business account, they're not going to allow you to keep cash back. You'll see the total of your deposit down here at the bottom. And all you want to do when you're finished is save and close. Now, before we do that, let's look at a couple of quick things at the top. Here's your next and previous buttons if you want to go backwards or forwards between your deposits. Here's your save option. And there's a couple of things you can print. You can print a deposit slip or a deposit summary. If you pulled in the wrong payments here, you can always go to this payments window here and check or uncheck these so you have the correct payments in this deposit. 
You can also look at the history of this deposit, and then if you have a file you need to attach, you can do that as well. Our deposit total is $5,364.93, and it's on January the 21st. I'm going to save and close because we're going to go and see if this is in your checkbook register. Here's your check register. I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to look at the checking register. And here's my deposit that I made for $5,364.93, and you can see it's on January the 21st. The reason it says split is because this deposit has multiple line items on it. In order to see that, I would have to double click where it says deposit here, and that would take me right into the deposit, and I can look at it or make any changes I want, and then save and close. And that completes the whole process from creating estimates all the way to recording deposits. This video is part of our full QuickBooks 2021 course. Take a look at the course by clicking right over there. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see more QuickBooks Pro 2020 videos, go ahead and click over there.